Hello sunshines! Welcome to Bunny Fish Crafts. I'm Heather, known as Bunny Fish on Instagram, YouTube, and Patreon. And I'm actually Heather from the future because Heather from the past forgot to intro up this um, this weekly vlog. So I hope you enjoy it. Uh, I, this week was so, so full. I've just barely started editing and it's going to be a long one. So if you don't have something to drink and maybe some knitting or crochet or paper crafting or something to do while you listen, I would suggest pausing and going and getting that. It is Monday morning, so let's do a quick shelf update. That's the same, I think. Um, this now has the spinning that I'm going to be doing. And there was a sock project there that's no longer there. Yay! And um, I'm this is not where where holiday cards are going to be displayed. I just haven't started setting those up yet. So they're living there for now. Um, I moved my cowl that I started last Vlogmas onto the shelf because I would like to finish that this year. And I have not worked on my socks at all this week. I've not worked on the sweater at all this week. I have been adding minis to this pile for this blanket as I've been working on my green square blanket. Today is Patrick's day off and there is no Thanksgiving get togethers in Michigan if it's going to be more than two households. So we are having Thanksgiving today and I don't have fancy surfing wear because I don't host anything. <laughs> so we are having baked potatoes, Brussels sprouts, mac and cheese. I was going to make homemade mac and cheese and then Patrick picked this up last night. So I'm probably going to make homemade mac and cheese on Thursday for me. Um, we have some stuffing, gravy, turkey. It's a small Thanksgiving feast this year, but you know, good enough. Although I feel like even getting a small turkey breast, this is huge. Excite! Excite! I have two, three packages I can count, really. I have two swap packages and one purchased package to open. Are you excited? I'm excited. What is it about Mondays that seems to be packages, right? Didn't I get packages last week on Monday? Hmm. Okay, first let's look at purchases because... Priscilla of Distinctive Crochet, this is your fault, but you know, I'm not mad about it. Um, she had a giveaway for Felicity Yarn Studio and she mentioned that there was a sale going on at the time of the giveaway. And so I went over and I was like, well, I don't need anything, but then I did because look at how beautiful the sock set is. Absolutely gorgeous. I don't know if it said in the listing that you got a progress keeper or if I just got a progress keeper because whatever. But look at how pretty that is. It's got sparkliness to it. This is the snow globe. It's a tweed sock set, so this is snow globe. And this is mini cardinal. And um it's it was just too pretty to not get. <laughs> And it was on a really good sale. It was like 20% off. And she sent me some tea. I love raspberry tea. And then this, I'm going to unpackage this so you can see. Oh my goodness. This is a hand beaded stitch marker. And it is a little black heart with rainbow drips. <gasps> it's so cute. I got it with this, um, what is this, lever back. So that I could wear it as an earring. And I only need one because... I'm sure I've mentioned this on the podcast before, but I don't know when. Um, I I have a nick in one of my ears because both of my ears were pierced with two holes. But one of my earrings got ripped out when I was, I don't know, like six or seven. So this ear has two holes in it. So what I like to do is wear one earring here in the front and then the same earring in the back as over here in the front. Or matching in the front holes and then a second earring in the back. But since this is big and dangly, it will probably be showcased in the front. Look at how cute it is. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Oh, no regrets. I'm so excited that I bought it. And many of you know, if you've been here, that um, one of my friends, that aqua color is like for her. And I knit her 
socks every year for ZK and for Christmas because I love her so much. Um, so yeah, I saw that and I thought of her and I was like, oh, I need to get that. And actually what I've been doing recently is making us matching socks. So especially a sock set, it's enough to get a shorty pair for her and then a not so shorty pair, but not super long pair for myself. So Haley, if you're watching, I'm just saying you might get some socks that look like that at some point. Okay, time for swap packages. Here's the first one. Oh my goodness, look at how cute everything is. Oh my gosh, look at these ornaments. I love them. So great, and these little yarn bits are perfect. Oh, I can't wait to knit those into things in a little, little penguin card. Mm. If you're new, penguins are my favorite animal, so I just love that. I got some tea. I also love tea. And clearly, I need some seed. Can you stop? Okay. <laughs> and clearly, I need some tea because I don't know what's going on with this, uh, this talking being weird. I do know what's going on. On Friday, it was like high 60s, maybe even 70 degrees. And over the weekend, it's gone down to freezing. We had snow yesterday. Oh, it's lovely. But this is what happens to my voice when that happens. Okay, next package. And the final package. It is marked fragile, so that's interesting. Look at how pretty this is. It's a little plastic, plastic um, ball with red and green yarn in it. Oh, it's so cute. And some chocolate and some mini skeins and some more tea. Oh my goodness. I am so spoiled. Totally reasonable to have three pies for four people, right? I'm eating all three, obviously. That's so excited I just started ripping it open. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, a package of pa Oh, excite! This is a prize package sent to me from, 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 MG Crochet and Knits. And it's from Girl Fibers. It is, the camera is not focusing. What are you doing, camera? It is Clover Fingering Weight in the May 2020 colorway. It is gorgeous. And look at all these extras. I really, really like turmeric tea. If you haven't tried it, it's kind of spicy, but really good. So if you like chai type teas, it doesn't taste like chai, but it's like in that same sort of array. And everything smells so good because it has this white grapefruit scent circle. Oh my gosh. It smells so good. Oh, this is an exciting prize package that I totally forgot was coming. Um, I won this by taking part in Wooly Wishes knit along that N Natalie of Knitty Natty was holding. And Wooly Wishes still is still collecting. They are a charity that collects um, handmade items. Knit Oh, excuse me, knit crochet sewn for Syrian mm -hmm. refugees in Turkey, which is kind of near and dear to my heart because, um, well, both of my sets of grandparents, well, my mom's side of the family is, my grandparents are first generation, and on my dad's side of the family, my grandma is first generation American, and her dad was half Syrian, so I have family in Syria that I don't know about. My grandma never met her sisters because um, I feel like story time should have my face even when it looks like this. Um, so my grandma almost had the chance to meet her half sisters because when her dad came over he left behind a whole family and then he remarried here and he was going to take my grandma to meet her half sisters but she had young children. So my dad is the second youngest of nine. 
and he was little, so my grandpa told her she couldn't go, and then her father passed, and she's old and not in the best health, so she couldn't travel, or can't travel now, so yeah, I saw the charity. I sent 22 things along to them because in a different life, those could be my kids who are getting the charity items. Yeah. So if you are looking for a charity to donate handmade items, give Wooly Wishes a look. I will leave their, um, their link below. So a nickel gets you six minutes of city parking, but it only takes three minutes. Whew, what a way to start a Wednesday. I finished this book. I didn't get very far through it previous to last night, and then last night and this morning I read the rest of it. Um, so this book is Grown by Tiffany D. Jackson. And it is heavy. So the reason why it took me time to get into the book is not because it's poorly written or not interesting, but because of this content warning right here. So mentions of sexual abuse, rape, assault, child abuse, kidnapping, and addiction to opioids. Um, and I super appreciate that there's a content warning because these are triggers for me, um, as a person who has, who was sexually assaulted as a child, like it was a really hard read. <laughs> it was a really, really hard read, but it was a really good read and, a really compelling look at how children are gaslit. What it comes down to is a book about a man with power and the women that he, not the women, the girls, the girls that he takes advantage of because they're all minors. Um, but specifically it follows Enchanted's story and yeah, how he uses his wealth and his power to manipulate situations and there's gaslighting and it is horrific and, um, deeply upsetting, but also very, very good. And if you have the ability to read it, if those triggers aren't too much for you, I think that this is so, so good. try the peppermint. We'll see how it goes. Yeah, that's good. I like the regular better. Hi, sunshines. It is Wednesday, the 24th, 25th, mid-20s of November. I am at work. It is echoey because we took down all of the grid walls, not me. The store took all of the grid walls down back here to paint. So it's echoey in the classroom area. I have like three minutes before I need to open the store. And today I'm feeling so overwhelmed. <laughs> not necessarily by work, but like by everything. So. Can I PSA for a minute? I'm going to anyway, even if you say no. So PSA, be nice to your kids' teachers. Can you understand me through my mask? Is this better? Be nice to your kids' teachers. Because, so we went full virtual this week. Everybody, even hybrid students. 
and some parents are just not nice and like I'm sorry your kid is having trouble I'm sorry that you don't understand the technology I will walk you through I will spend all my time helping you that's what I'm here for but can you not be mean to me like it's not my fault that we're in quarantine I don't want to be in quarantine either I would much rather be working in the school building especially with my kiddos, especially with special ed. But that's not what it is, and it wasn't my decision. So stop being mean to me. It's okay to freak out, but you don't have to be mean. So be nice to your teachers if you have kids in school. And if you're a teacher, you're kicking butt, I promise. I promise. It's also stressful having my kids home for full virtual because it means that they're in meetings all day so I have to constantly constantly be checking okay when's your next meeting when are you supposed to be there because the schedule is new and I want to make sure that they're there and it also means that there are 50 extra voices well I mean it's like 65 extra voices in my house every day which is stressful for me because I like my house quiet <laughs> and it is loud and it is stressing me out a lot <laughs> so yeah it, feel, it just feels really hard right now it'll be fine I'm fine it just feels really hard I am hoping to talk to my kid's dad this week and send them to him for a week or two in December. I'm hoping we can work that out. So whatever you're going through in pandemic-ness, you're doing a good job and you're doing the best you can. And even when it feels super overwhelming, you're not alone. even when everything feels really, really big. If everything feels really, really big for you right now, I get you. We can talk about it in the comments. You can send me an email or a DM. On today's list of things to do, I have these to sticker, but um, there was a note that maybe some of them smell weird, so don't sticker some of those. So I guess I'll be sniffing yarn and stickering yarn today. I also have 10 hanks of this Lina yarn, Lena yarn, to wind. And it is linen, so it's gonna be a hassle. So I am, I put a rubber band on my um, ball winder to hopefully keep it from jumping off. We shall see how that goes. And another shipment to go through. Yay! I am excited. I'm just feeling overwhelmed today. And I have a spreadsheet to finish today too. So I have this column left and then I have two or three more columns to fill in. It's going to be a busy day at the yarn shop and we're only open until three instead of till six. So it's a lot. Probably not a lot of cleaning happening today other than wiping down all the surfaces.
rubber band did its job. Hello, sunshines. Look, this panel is finished. Yay! So now I get to do the sashing, which is less exciting because it means that I have to pick up around the exterior of all of my blocks. So my plan is, I did this before on a mitered square blanket. I'm going to pick up around each block and then I'm going to do maybe five garter ridges. I haven't quite decided on the the number of garter ridges. Um, because on the first blanket I did, it was for my friend Josh, and his favorite number is 11. So I did five garter ridges, and then I did a um, garter Kitchener stitch to make 11 ridges in between the blocks. My favorite number is seven. I feel like seven is a much more manageable <laughs> commitment than 11. I know that's only um, four less garter ridges, but that equals four less rounds per block. So I think I'm going to do that. So yeah, that's going to be what I'm going to start. And I am going to see how far I can get on that before the end of the month. If I can get two blocks completely edged and um, a Kitchener for those two, I'll be pretty pleased with that. I picked up my hyperbolic hexagon sock to work on because, you know, I wanted to finish it this month and I haven't really worked on it. So I picked it up and I did one round and then I decided to measure it against my foot. I don't know if I'll be able to show you one-handed, but... Ta -da, ta -da. It fits my foot and I am not to the end of the pattern. Yeah, I can't show you one handed, but just trust me <laughs> that it fits my foot. Um, I've already had to take out rounds because it wasn't going to fit and it's made to fit a 72 stitch sock and I usually do a 64. So I knew there was going to be some modification. Um, but basically, I am ready to turn this into the toe and take this part off for the heel. So I think what I'm going to do is work around to about 15 stitches here and then transfer these plus about 15 stitches to another needle and that will be my toe box and then you Kitchener. So I'm going to Kitchener all of these until I get to um, somewhere in here where the leg starts. <sighs> yeah. I took out a ton of rounds though to do this. And, um, and also there's some short rows that are supposed to happen that I'm not going to do. So going very much off script here. Hopefully it works out. Here is the sock with the Kitchener. So as you can see, the top is ready for the toe, but I'm going to do some short row right here to bring this, um, to bring this up so that I'm ready for the toe all over. I don't think I'm going to do any short rows on the cuff. I think I'm just going to do a few rounds in a two by one rib because this is a two by one rib. This is a free pattern available on Ravelry. So yeah. Um, so I'm going to do that for probably 10 rounds and not worry about short rows up here, but I will do short rows on the foot. These look so cool. I'm super pleased with them. I can't wait to uh, to finish the first one and start the second one. Do I think I could do the second one by the end of the month? Today's the 25th and there's 30 days. But I don't have to teach or work the next two days. Hmm. We shall see. Did the cuff on the hyperbolic hexagon sock. Um, 
But I only bound off half of it because now I'm tired and I don't want to. And I don't even like binding off. <laughs> so I'll do it in the morning. But now I'm going to start A Queer History of the United States for Young People by Michael Bronchi, adapted by Richie Chavat. Chavat? Chavat? Um, so this is cool. I haven't actually re read what this is about. So it seems like this, um, this book was written for, like, A Queer History of the United States was writ written by Michael Bron- Oh, Bronski, that's a K. Clearly I should go to sleep. Um, Michael Bronski. And then, um, Richie Shavat, um, turned it into something that'll be easily read for young people. That should be cool. Um, yeah, I'm going to start that now. I'll probably get like three pages in and then fall asleep because I'm pretty tired because it's almost 11 o'clock. Good morning, sunshines. It is Thursday, the 26th of November. And it is Thanksgiving in the U.S. So happy Thanksgiving, even if you're not in the U.S. I hope that you find something to be grateful for today. I hope you find a lot of things to be grateful for today. My plan today is... So I made a giant batch of turkey soup yesterday with the intent to take some to my mom today. But then my son ate it all, so I have to make some turkey soup this morning because I am going to go see my mom around lunchtime, just me, not the kids. Um, I'm going to take some laundry, and yeah, I'm going to go visit her because she is having a tough emotional time right now. Her boyfriend is hunting, and he has been gone since the first week of November. So she has been kind of by herself the last three weeks and she's my grandma's caretaker and my grandma is nonverbal because she has um, Alzheimer's and my uncle goes there to work, but like, they're not close. Like, they're not like estranged or anything, my mom and my uncle, but they're just not close. So I think... She's lonely, so I'm going to go visit her for as long as it takes to wash. I think I have maybe three loads of laundry to take. We'll see. I have dog bedding. I have hand knits. And probably one other load. <laughs> the hand knits will be um, put in a load, but then I will air dry them when I get home. So, yeah. So I'll probably be over there about two-ish hours, um, maybe three, I don't know. My intent is to hang out in the basement and she'll hang out in the living room. It's six steps up from the basement to the living room and we'll just hang out like that. Because it's hard to be lonely during the holidays. Holidays are hard anyway. I feel like anything that you're feeling is just amplified because you're supposed to be happy and joyful. So if you're happy and joyful, you feel extra happy and joyful because that's what you're supposed to do. And if you're not happy and joyful, you feel it extra because you're supposed to be happy and joyful. So if you're having a rough time, again, come talk to me. I'm here. You can find me on Instagram or in the comments below. We can talk it out. Okay? Have a happy Thanksgiving. Well, by this time you will have had a happy Thanksgiving. But I just want you to know that on Thanksgiving morning, I am sending out positive thoughts and hopes into the universe for you. Thursday night update. So... Remember how last night I was saying I was going to pick up stitches around and go around and stuffy stuff and 
only seven rounds. Well, that's because I was sleepy. And then I woke up this morning and picked up this blanket and I was like, that's not how I designed the blanket with the sashing. And I realized that, so I do 17 stitches on each side of my squares and on the longest um, blocks I did 5 plus 10 plus 5 with a square in between. So I had to do seven, a 17 stitch sashing right here to make it work. So I'm attaching with 17 stitch, 17 stitches, um, including the stitch that I pick up. I did go ahead and pick up stitches all the way around, um, just so that it would be easy to go back and forth and make sure that things are lining up on either side. So, you know, if I'm on the, the last stitch on this side or second to last stitch of this square, I'm also on the second to last stitch of this square. Um, so I did take the time to do that and I will, obviously I haven't done it here, but I will do it before, um, before working any other sides of the panels. Um, the other thing though, is that connecting these two panels, it's 17 stitches back and forth in garter stitch. But when I connect these panels here to the panels that are going to be here, it's going to be long rows of garter stitch and there will be 17 ridges in between. So yeah. <laughs> That's my plan anyway. I think it'll work out fine because I th I don't want the sashing to be like fighting against the other sashing, having this go across 17 and plus it'll just be way faster to do rows back and forth. Yeah. I'll talk to you about that when I do that part. That's my thought process. So anyway, since I'm working on the sashing, that meant that I had to obviously pivot in what I thought I was going to do. But this is going to take more time because I thought I was going to do, when I was talking about it, I thought I was going to do sashing that was about, you know, this wide. So half the width. So double the time to knit. So my goal is, which I didn't meet tonight by two garter ridges, whatever, is to do four squares worth of sashing because I've been doing four squares and four squares worth of stashing is the same amount of like space. And if I do that, then it'll take two and a half days to put together this part right here because it's 10 squares. Um, which is a rate I can live with. I don't think I'll finish the blanket by the end of the year, but early in January, which is okay. And I did finish my first broken ornaments sock. Um, I'm not really happy with the flare at the cuff. I am going to block it and see if that helps it settle. And if I still don't like it, I'll rip it out and redo the, um, the bind off. I don't love binding off toe up socks. I think it looks sloppy. Anyway, I started the second one and I am on round 27 of the, the round that I left off on per like pattern count was 56. So I'm on 27 of 56, but that's not actually accurate because hi cat you ready for bedtime snuggles? You are. Did you say yes? You say yeah, please? Okay. Uh, what was I saying about the sock? I, I know that I took out a bunch of rounds in the section previous to the final section that I did. So I don't actually have whatever 56 minus 27 rounds to go Thir 29 
I don't actually have 29 rounds to go. Um, I still have hopes to finish this by the end of the month, but I have to do those other, I don't know, probably 25 rounds. The rounds get bigger by, um, how many stitches do I have? I have six sections, so by 12 stitches every other round. I have hopes that I'll finish it by the end of the month, so I have to do that, and then again, of course, cuff and toe and that um, short row section on the bottom of the foot. I say of course, but I don't think I showed you the short row section on the bottom of the foot on the first sock. I'll show you that tomorrow. So, hi P, are you coming to bed too? Come on. Come here. It's going to be a full cuddle party tonight. Look at you. What are you doing? Did you say don't look at me, Ma? Okay. So, yes, I think this sock is doable if I focus, but I have to focus because there is a lot of work yet to go into it. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm trying to record here. Jeez, guys. Jeez, what are you doing? Patrick brought me breakfast for the next several days. So thoughtful. Happy Friday, friends! Do you have plans? Are you working? I'm not working today. I am sitting on my bed today. I just put on fresh sheets. We are having a Lord of the Rings marathon. We finished the first one. It's about noon o'clock. And, um, yeah, I'm knitting away on my blanket and my hyperbolic hexagon sock. And I started a seamless Saloma because I apparently needed another thing on the needles. Patrick is currently out to pick up some sushi for me because he's very thoughtful and kind. And when he gets back, we will continue on with our marathon. So I did some cleaning. I did some dishes. I guess I could clean my floor a little bit. There are a few things on my floor. I guess I'll take care of that while he's gone so that I can enjoy Lord of the Rings for the rest of the day. And if we get through Lord of the Rings and he's still awake, probably watch The Hobbit, but I don't think he will be. I think he's going to fall asleep at the beginning of the third movie. It is just before 6 p.m. and I have reached my quota for my blanket today, but I am going to keep working on it because I would rather surpass that quota and get this blanket done sooner than just stop. I am also making progress on my sock, but the rounds are super long now. I, th I have, I think, 39 stitches in between each marker, and there's six markers, so 40 times six is 240 right? 240 stitches per round. So yeah, making some progress. I would really like to finish with this section. So I need to get to 45 stitches between these needles in order to finish that particular section. That is my goal for the evening. But in between that, I'm going to do a few. Okay. So my rotation, you guys know that I work on project rotation is one round on this not a set of rounds, not like an increase round and then a round, just one round and then five ridges. That's what I've been doing all day. And I also started a seamless Saloma, but I'm using not the recommended needles or yarn. So I had to rip it out a few times because it was just too ginormous. And I'm actually using less stitches than the smallest size in the pattern. It's fine. I've made a lot of seamless Salomas. I know how they work. It's a pattern by Megan Williams. Um, so I know how they work and it'll be fine. Just winging it. So unexpected, I finished joining those two things together, which is lovely. So I don't know if I'm going to start this tonight, but now I'm going to pick up across this side of the blanket. Let me spread this out on the floor. So here are my two blocks. This one's a little wonky because it's already on a needle picked up. So I just did this over the last two days. So now I'm going to pick up across.
across the top of this block and then down this side and then I will grab another block and pick up along the one side of that block and then knit these two, those two together, this strip, and then I'll pick up across the top of the third block and then I'm going to knit long rows of garter stitch. Probably do 15 rows of garter stitch on this part and then put it on hold until I connect another three blocks together so I can do a, a garter stitch row on that side and then Kitchener for my final garter stitch. And that's my tentative plan for now. Oh my gosh, it's so pretty. I'm so excited for this. Good morning, sunshines. It is Saturday and it is 6 a.m. And clearly my anxiety has caught up with me because I just woke up from a dream where I was working at the yarn shop, but we were in a new location. And so first... A whole bunch of people came in for social, which we're not having right now, and nobody would put on their masks. And everybody put on their masks and they stepped outside for something, I don't know, I guess to put up our sign that we put up outside. And when I walked in, nobody was wearing their mask. And I'm like, put your masks on. You cannot be here if you're not wearing a mask. And they were like, oh, the we don't have to do that anymore. And I was like, since when? I've heard nothing. The manager hasn't told me that that's a thing. Put your mask on or leave. And they wouldn't put their mask on, so I kicked them out. And they were like, well, this is ridiculous. And I was like, well, text the manager, and she can call me and yell at me. But until she says that we're not wearing masks, you're wearing a mask if you're in the store. So they left. It was a big group, too. It was like six or seven people. And then I couldn't get our computer to find the, um, the sale software, like the, 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 Im the inventory customer card piece of software was just not on the computer. And so all of a sudden, not only are we a yarn shop, we're also a party store. So I'm talking on the phone to the manager and I'm like, I can't find it. I, it's not on the computer. I tried typing in the name to search for it. Nothing. And so as we're talking, someone comes behind the counter, grabs the keys from behind the counter and helps themselves to cigarettes. So you may be wondering what anxiety? Well, it's the holiday weekend, but it's not like the normal holiday. And today is Small Business Saturday. And I'm hoping that we do good business because, you know, the small business needs it, but also a little stressed um, at the idea of cranky people today. But that's just a small part of anxiety. The major anxiety is that I am taking my kids to meet with their grandma tomorrow in middle the middle of Ohio and then she is taking them the rest of the way to to go to their dad's for two weeks. Oh, I might start crying just talking about it. Okay, anxiety is fun. Um, it's a good thing. I asked for it. Like the whole time we've been in lockdown since March, their dad has been like, hey, if at any time you need to tap out, just let me know. Because, you know, having the kids full time is stressful and anxiety inducing. And so on Wednesday, I was like, hey, listen, I need you to take them. I need, I need you to take them because with virtual school and me teaching virtually, our house is just not set up to have three separate meeting areas and the, the, Two days last week, you know, that we had school, I was in meetings on and off all day and the kids weren't, but starting on Monday, they will be like all day meetings. 
My house is not set up for three people to have all day meetings. And it stresses me out having all of the student voices in my house because I like my house quiet. I think I already said that on this vlog, but I'm going to say it again. So yeah, that's stressing me out. So I was like, please take the kids. Please take them for more than a weekend so that like I can adjust and get used to this because I am not good at new and it feels like this whole year has just been new on top of new on top of new. So yeah, they're going to their dad's for two weeks, which will be fine. It'll be good. He just moved into a new house so they can set up their new rooms and they can see their other dogs and you know, they'll be able to talk to me whenever they want, call me whenever they want. Um, but now I feel super guilty <laughs> for asking for a break, right? This is totally illogical. I need this break, but I feel terrible about it and like horrible guilt, even though my kids are excited and I talked to their dad yesterday and we like figured things out and everything's going to be fine. It's going to be great. But my anxiety says, why are you doing this? Why are you kicking your kids out? Blah, blah, blah. It's ridiculous and awful. So I'm just going to breathe and go to work and have a great day. And at the same time that I'm feeling like guilty about sending my kids away, I'm also feeling guilty because I know a lot of people do not have this, op this option. So I'm complaining in my head about this option, this opportunity to have space for my kids, which a lot of people can't. So if you are stuck in your house with your family and you cannot get away and you desperately need to, I hope you find some way to do that safely because I feel like for introverts especially, I mean, I know it's hard for extroverts because they can't go out into the world, but if you're an introvert and you can't even introvert in your own house, um, yeah, that's super hard <laughs> because I cannot introvert in my own house right now and I, I need that. Today feels like a fancy kind of day. I did my makeup, which is just eyeliner and mascara and some tinted lip balm, even though nobody's going to see that. <laughs> it's still there. I put on earrings and I did my hair and this whole look took less than five minutes because if it takes more than five minutes, I'm not into it. <laughs> so yeah. And I'm wearing this beautiful sweater that my friend Josh made for himself, I think, but then gave it to me. And it's lovely. I think it's a Stephen West pattern. I will show you. I'm feeling cute today. I'll show you a picture at work because we have that full mirror at work. I do not have one of those in my house. Just never, never thought to need one. And I don't, except when I want to show you guys what I look like. So, yeah. I'm going to enjoy my lipstick for the next my lip balm, my tinted lip balm for the next like hour before I have to go to work. All right, friends, I have about 10 minutes before I need to open the shop and uh, I'm ready to the Kitchener. <laughs> so let's see how far I can get on my Kitchener in the next 10 or so minutes. Hello sunshines! It is Sunday the 29th of November and normally I would close out the week on Sunday but there's only 30 days in November and then vlogmas starts so I'm not going to do that. And plus I have two um, advent swap packages that I'm expecting tomorrow so my shelf is not set up for like closing out the week. Um, so I kind of want to wait and see if they actually arrive tomorrow so that I can set up my shelf a little bit more and get ready for Vlogmas. So yeah, I'm not closing it out today, but 
I wanted to stop in because um, I'm feeling much better about shipping my kids off today. I'm still a little anxious, but pretty good about it. And I feel really good about <laughs> cleaning my house because like, I know other people don't have this problem, but like, I, my house is never clean, like super clean when my kids are here because I clean a room and they make a mess in it and like I make them clean it up but they clean to kid standards not to mom standards yeah so I'm looking forward to my house being really clean for the next you know two weeks <laughs> um obviously I started in my little corner of the futon cleaning under it cleaning behind it cleaning off my shelves because I had some mess going on there, um, changing things up. The other kind of exciting, um, not really important, but kind of random and exciting thing is that I am caught up, well, tomorrow I will be caught up on podcasts. Remember how I was like three months behind? Now I'm like two weeks behind except so I'm two weeks I have two weeks of October to watch because when I started watching podcasts again I watched the day's current episodes and then went back to things that I missed and started filling in so I have two weeks in October <laughs> to, to catch up on and then I'm ready for vlogmas watching which is going to be super exciting. I'm so excited. I love Vlogmas. I love it so, so much. I don't love day in the life vlogs generally, unless they're knitters day in the life vlogs. I love those, all of them. So other random thing I am planning while my kids are gone to touch up the paint. Like this is paint scraped off from, there was a shelf right here. There's another ding on the wall over here. There's some dings in the door. This is some Play-Doh that my son put there. We're going to have a talk about that. So I'm going to paint because my children won't be around to touch the wet paint. <laughs> These are the things I get excited about. I love my kids. You guys know I love my kids, but I am so ready for this two-week break to just regroup, you know? I'm very, very fortunate that I have this, and I am so looking forward to it. I thought this sign was going to be just wishful thinking, but no. We have some snow. Yay! Oh my goodness, there's a package, but I can't open it because I have to go to a meeting with students. <sighs> oh my gosh, oh my gosh, it's so cute. I think these are supposed to be separate, but they have fused together. In the, in the transit, and I'm excited for this. So this, ba -da, ba da is the Quirky Fish Vlogmas Advent Swap. So if you're not watching Kalisha of Quirky Monday, you're living your life wrong. I'm just going to let you know that. <laughs> but I, we swapped. So she has a little package from me. I have a package from her. And um, she's killing me on the packaging. Hers is way cuter than mine, but whatever. It's fine. I'm so excited. I'm going to unpack this onto my shelf. It's going to be great. You know what's really fun? When your friend makes cool things and you know it's for you. Mm, look at the stitch marker advent calendar. I'm super excited. So we exchanged 12 mini skeins of yarn and 12 stitch markers or progress keepers. I'm so excited. I'm going to be switching off every other day opening a stitch marker and a yarn. So that's cool. And look, surprise teas <gasps> and some teas that are not surprises and a Christmas present and that cute ornament and some little extras. I am going to save the little extras for those days that are extra rough so I can open something extra on those days and also the surprise teas will also be opened on those days because teaching remotely is rough y'all 
it just is. Today was not a bad day. Um, I All I have left is a teacher meeting, so I'm pretty much done for the day. But yeah, look, there's the, there's the mini skeins. There they are, they're so cute. Um, but it's rough. It's rough trying to like navigate things and yeah, and deal with temper tantrums virtually instead of in person and it's tough. So I'm going to save those. Also, yesterday I was talking about how I was going to paint the dinged up wall. I did last night. I was like, you know what? That's going to take three seconds. Let me just do it. And it's perfect. I'm so happy that I took three minutes to paint the three spaces on the wall. This wall, a wall right there, and a wall right there that had little dings on them. Also, this is from my mask on Saturday. My masks rub my nose and give me a, a slightly raw spot. It's okay. Um, you don't actually want to go outside. It's snowy and wet, and also you're not an outside cat. She's pretty sure, though. You better not be scratching on my door. She said she didn't mean it. Okay, I am going to continue cleaning some and probably make myself some lunch. All I've had to eat today so far are Cheez-Its. It's not an adult move. It is Monday night, time to close out this vlog. So Top Shelf has the new teas. The shelf has new candles. I am planning on burning candles that my friends have got or made for me in the past. I am one of those people who saves things because they're too precious, which is silly because my friends made them or brought them for me so that I would use them. So those are going to be used soon. And here's the bottom shelf. Well, the bottom two shelves with new advent things. My other advent calendar didn't come today. So hopefully tomorrow so I can open it. On the back of the futon, we have a few things. So on my drive, I listened to Great Expectations by Charles Dickens. It's going okay. It's a classic, so that's the only way I like to consume classics is via audiobook. I finished two more of the chunky Turn a Square hats this week. I finished Broken Ornament Socks. Why did I wait so long? What, like, why did the first one take me so long? Because the second one only took me three days. <laughs> it's so quick and such a cool pattern. Uh, look for it to on tomorrow's vlog because those are the socks I'm going to wear. And then I also have, I pulled out and did a little bit of work, this much work, on my cowl that I'm hoping to finish this year during Vlogmas. I started it last year during Vlogmas and then put it away forever um, in my quirky Monday bag. I have a new start in this bag, which I'll show you in a moment. So I've just barely started the cuff of what will be, what's it called? It's a cookie A pattern, pointel. And this is skeiny dipping in the colorway salt marshes. And that is, I'm hoping to finish that, you know, sometime in December. It is pair number four of five that I was intending to make by the end of the year. So doing pretty good. And then here is blanket. So here is the section that I had put together, I don't know, a few days ago. I'm almost finished attaching these. I have, looks like three squares worth of short rows to go. And then I also picked up the long garter ridge on the bottom. I felt like I wanted to get that started because I know that that is going to be very boring, but also really good meeting knitting because I don't have to pay attention to it. Okay, so that's the end of the week and tomorrow I will see you for Vlogmas! I can't wait!